بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ فاروق خان ویلکم ٹو انادر ایپیسوڈ آف نیف سینئر ٹاک فنڈیڈ بائی دی نیو ہرائزن فار سینئرس پروگرام گورنمنٹ آف کینیڈا ٹوڈے ہیو اے ویری اسپیشل گیسٹ ڈاکٹر اقبال ندوی از واز آلسو دی پریسیڈنٹ آف آئی سی این اے اسلامک سرکل آف نارتھ امیریکا ہی از این امام Past. In the past president and Imam and today we have him in, in the studio. So I'd like to welcome you Dr. Nadvi. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Dr. Nadvi uh, when you came to Canada uh, and you know how was your experiences? What uh, you know were the challenges that you discovered when you came here? Yeah, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Farooq sahab, aap, aap, you're, you invited me. This is honor for me and Alhamdulillah, yani it is a good opportunity for me to speak to our audience as well. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Iqbal Nadavi and actually I was born in India, Bhopal, and I memorized the Quran there. Then I moved to Nadbat al-Ulama, another very famous Islamic institute in Lucknow in India. I did my Alamiya course there, then I moved back to Bhopal. and I did my BA and MA in, in uh, arts uh, and mostly we take uh, Hindi, English, Arabic, Urdu and political science. Then I moved to Saudi Arabia to do my study in license of Sharia in Medina University. Mashallah. Then I did my MA and PhD from Ummul Qura University, Mecca oh, in uh, Usul al-Fiqh or you can say in Sharia. Okay. Then I was offered a teaching job in uh, Malaysia, in Islamic University of Malaysia. Oh, okay. And also King Saudi University in Riyadh. Oh, okay. So then I preferred to join the King Saudi University. It is close to Haram and it is a little bit easy environment for me. So I, teach, uh, I was teaching from 99 to 97 in that university. I was teaching Islamic studies and also teaching, you know, King Saudi University is a there every student of every college they must know some basics of islam okay so they need uh, to take four basics of islam 101 of islam in culture 101 of islam in political science 101 in islamic economic system and also islamic movements okay. islamic revival history okay so i was teaching different courses and also i was teaching usul al-fiqh the jurisprudence principles Then in 97, for some reason, I, I was uh, to, jo- to le- leave Saudi Arabia. Some kind of incident happened there. So it is actually what behind something happened. But anyhow, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the door for me in Canada. Oh, uh, Calgary Islamic you know, organization, they are under uh, uh, you know, Muslim organization of Canada, Calgary. Okay. So they are running the all massages and all services under one umbrella. Okay. So they invited me, so I visited here as a visitor. After some time they offered me uh, just like a work permit okay. to teach and to be imam there. So I arrived uh, in 98. Oh, okay. uh, first I came myself, then I w- went back and b- brought my family again. My, I have my, shall I married and I have four kids. Oh, shall I? two boys and two girls okay. and all born in Saudi Arabia oh, so okay. anyhow they were you know living there in Arabic environment oh, okay. but they moved from desert to cold, cold. <laughs> you know cold yeah. winter two, area two different environment from altogether. one language to other language oh sure so I was uh, there from 98 to 2004 okay. and uh, uh, it was a kind of a good uh, uh, opportunity for me Because I was, when I was in India, uh, we were living Muslim as a Muslim minority in India, right? So our experience little bit, you know, mix how we live as a minority in India. Oh, so okay. it, it helped me here oh, when I you. came here. Okay. So how, like, for example, living as a Muslim minority here and to interact sure. with other, you know, groups and other kind of oh, thing and so on. Okay. And also my uh, journey of learning started from Bhopal. Bhopal was one time in the British uh, era time, or b- even b- British, before British era, in the 1700s, 
uh, one Muslim uh, ruler uh, built this, uh, founded this uh, Muslim state, yes, Bhopal. It, yeah, it was a princely and state. And it was yeah. very, very, for example, famous for their scholars and their service of Islam. Even the four Muslim women ruled there. Yes. And they were very, very, you know, for example, practicing Muslim, but same time very good in their ruling, serving everyone, Muslim, Hindu, and ev taking care of everyone. So I learned from that time how we live a peaceful society, oh, okay. living together, right, and uh, respecting each other. And at the same time, I was uh, in Bhopal, was always living in, a, in an environment which was, you can say, very close to purity of Islam. Oh, okay. And away from all kind of, you know, additional thing and so on. So when I came to uh, Lucknow, so I got a kind of an institution. Institution was very famous because in India we have a two kind of uh, systems. So one is uh, just like built by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan yeah. University. Yeah. So this university was, uh, it was Muslim university, but they were focusing on, you can say, the modern education. Oh, more secular education. More secular education. Yeah. Even they were caring about the Islamic teaching, yeah, yeah. but it was their, you know, yeah. for example, s side notes about. Sure. And other extreme point was Deoban, Darulum Deoban. Yeah. So they were focusing on only the fiqh and the sharia. Yeah, only the religious. And they series. were not taking any other kind of activities. Okay. But their rule was very, very great when they were fighting against the British to make uh, India independent. And they contributed a lot. Oh, okay. But same time, their, um, their, uh, you can say the understanding of deen was based on Hanafi school. Oh, okay. So when I moved to Saudi Arabia, it was totally different environment. Yes. Uh, there is a, some kind, you know, the, they are practicing other kind of school and they have sure. a... So, but Alhamdulillah, yani I learned from these all three, you can say Bhopal and Lucknow and then Saudi Arabia. I earned good things from everyone. Okay, good. So it made make, make me, myself, to be a little bit broader in my vision and understanding and dealing with people. Okay. But the last thing happened when I came to Canada. So it was also a new journey for me. So I was understanding how I suppose, for example, whatever knowledge I have, how we apply in Canada, in Canadian environment. Sure. And especially my specialty is fiqh. So mostly people when they are coming, they have a lot of questions about sure. the, you know, halal and haram about the different issues and so on sure. and they are not from one country yeah they are coming from 100 countries exactly right so i always said that in in, in <coughs> canada we have three four opportunities first opportunity that the, our relation is a muslim with the christian with jews with others it has different historical you know up and downs yeah but it is first time we are face to face sure right so yeah. i can learn what uh, Christian uh, said and they can learn from me what Islam said. Sure. Instead of going to media or going to different sources, which they always, you know, make yeah. make uh, Islamic some kind of, you know, in misinformation, yeah. giving yeah. them to wrong yeah. understanding. Yeah. Second thing is that I was actually when I was Saudi Arabia uh, living there. So there also there's many Muslim were working there. But Saudi Arabia, they were just using them as an employee. Right, but not giving them any citizenship, any kind of rights. But when I came here, it was totally different scenario. Yeah. Right, Muslim, they can stay here and they can be part of this country. So issue was for me how I do two things. First thing, how I develop Muslim as a ummah, not divided. Suppose I'm coming here as an Indian, sure. other persons coming from other. Yeah. So they, we must be, for example, proud about our, you know, back home, uh, whatever identity we have. Sure. But our contribution is supposed to be to uh, make our, ourselves back to our ummah concept. Sure. Second thing, how we learn, for example, our duty, either we are living in peaceful environment or we are living in very disturb, disturbing environment, yeah. how we be good Muslim in our practice and how we be good da'i for Islam, sure. right, to do Islam for others as well. Sure. So Alhamdulillah, it was a very good journey for me and actually the um, uh, Calgary, it is a mostly uh, dominated by Lebanese Arab people. Oh, okay. And then there are Pakistani is the second uh, number. And my uh, uh, contribution for them was because I was bilingual. I was speaking Arabic, I was speaking Urdu, and I was learning English also. Sure. So I was in helpful to uh, bring them together and okay. to connect to each other. Oh, okay. So Alhamdulillah, I lived there six years. Oh, okay. And, and, and uh, how was your relationship with the Canadians? Uh, very good, because, because I was that time, I was also a kind of priest 
in a university. Oh, okay. You know, like, you know, because they need, for example, they have a masjid and okay. they have a, a multi-faith uh, place. Oh, okay. So they asked me many advices how we serve Muslims, oh, okay. how we help them. Okay. So I was in position to serve, advise them. Suppose, for example, our Muslim need few things. Okay. First thing, dietary, halal food. Yeah. Second thing is prayer time. Okay. Right. And also, for example, suppose, for example, some clean, clean place to use washroom okay. and to do wudu. Right. Oh, okay. right? So okay. they adopted all these things. Okay. Even the washroom is designed for Muslim. So, so let me ask you a critical question. You know, when we are living in Muslim countries, uh, such as in Pakistan or Saudi Arabia, the uh, the perception about the the the, the Western countries or western folks is very different as compared to you know when we yeah. actually come here yeah. when we interact uh, the you know the, yeah. the, the communities D what differences did you find uh, what, yeah you know this is of course uh, you know uh, two things very important first thing when you migrate so first generation they come from their own background their own countries so they have uh, some package of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And they always remember this. Just I give an example. Suppose if you are dealing with police here, you will always remember the police in India or Pakistan torturing. Or exactly. They are doing this thing. So this concept continue. Yeah. But the next generation, those who are born here and they raised here, they are different, yeah. right? So next generation actually they carry the real message. Yeah. So my position was that how I give the um, first generation how they supposed to to practice islam here in a better way okay and to for next generation how they prepare themselves to be good die and good muslim and good citizen okay and for this reason i did uh, interfaith programs I sure. started there and very good thing if i if you know that uh, i am the first person who actually uh, negotiated with uh, army to bring a muslim army men in their uh, military okay. and to provide good facility for them Oh, okay. So it started from that time and now. So we are talking about the Canadian Army. Canadian yeah. Army. Oh, Canadian okay. Army. Because one person actually he approached me oh, okay. and he asked me that, you know what, we, we need a Muslim master to join us. I said, I can recommend it, but I need three, four things. First of all, I said, first thing, dietary. They need halal food. Oh, okay. Okay. The second thing is that, suppose Muslim women joining, so they have hijab. Okay. So they have dress code. Okay. The third thing, they need prayer time. Yeah. Right? And fourth thing, suppose they don't want to go to some countries, they don't want to fight some countries, so what you will advise them? So they accepted all these four, th four things. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So this, you know, before that, a Muslim man was in the army and he came to me and he said, you know what, they have to, just like they will awake me, four o'clock. Yeah. And if uh, I woke up ten minutes earlier to pray, they will stop me. Oh. They will not allow me. Oh, okay. And then one time I asked them a Friday prayer. So they left, they took me on Sunday to some masjid. Oh, okay. So after that it happened, they're providing now halal food. Okay. They are providing hijab, accepted it. Oh, okay. It, it is in dress code. Oh, okay. Army dress code. Yes. And then they said, okay, you know, your time of prayer will be always available. Oh, okay. And fourth thing, if you want to not fight, you'll be in, in reserve, reserve army. Oh, I see. So what happened? A Muslim man can join. And then he can take the four years training and also get some good education, yeah, free. Yeah. And then he want to stay, stay, otherwise he can leave. Now in the army, there are at least five Muslim chaplains. Oh, okay. And actually the problem, or can I say problem or their the policy is that they don't disclose the religion of the army men. So then we, we have no idea. But I know, knew that time there are 200 Muslim are actually in Muslim uh, in Canadian army. Okay, yeah. And now maybe more. Okay. So it was a very good, I can say, contribution from my side okay. to establish a relation with armies. You know, Muslims, uh, you can say, how, sure. how we can join uh, yeah. army, it yeah. is haram or it is something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I explained to them and okay. I was in position to do this thing. Okay. Other thing which I said, uh, we did some interfaith programs. So it was, alhamdulillah, a good uh, initiative and okay. I invited others, for example, to visit masjid. Oh, okay. And just remember, we were always inviting Muslims. Uh, non-Muslim schools or all Muslim or all schools and they'll come here they stay with us and they listen okay and one thing I did also uh, just like a police uh, new recruits okay when they are for example going to graduate it right and join sure so I invite them in masjid 
Oh, okay. To know how they deal with Muslims. Oh, okay. So it's a more sensitivity training. Of course. Oh, okay. Of course. So they know about Islam, yeah, how yeah. to be respectful yeah. to enter masjid. Yeah. And for example, how to suppose not shake hand to hand to women and so on. Yeah. Many things. Yeah. So it kind of any thing happened. And okay. it was actually, alhamdulillah, a lot of development happened later. Okay. And one thing which happened for Muslim community, when I was there, it was only one masjid in uh, Calgary. In Calgary. Okay. And it was huge masjid, but the problem with this masjid, it was built before Muslim uh, you know, uh, live around it. Ah. And then it become very posh area. Okay. So the Muslim population actually was living other areas. Okay. So I advised Muslim, uh, you know, uh, Muslim representative to buy places, other places. So now, Alhamdulillah, in, in Calgary, there are many masajids. So, so in 2004, you then you moved to Toronto. What happened actually when I was in uh, Calgary, so, you know, the Al Falah Islamic Center, yes. it is run by ICNA. Yes, yes. So, I was a member of ICNA also. Yes. So, the, the president of ICNA, who was in US, he asked me to move here oh, to okay. serve this masjid. Okay. So, I said, How I will survive? He said, oh. No, no, we will appoint you as a director oh, okay. of center, and okay. then you will be also resident. So, of how's ICNA. your experiences in Toronto? Uh, as compared to Calgary? Very different, very different because, uh, you know, Toronto is a hub of Muslims from all over the world. Yes. Right? 60% Muslim are living in Toronto. Yes. Many masajid, many centers, many activities. Yeah. But uh, the, the issue he, is here, how we bring them together. Okay. Because we have uh, no any kind of legal thing to bind them to live together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we are not, so we are different organization. Yeah. So I was always promoting two things. First thing, uh, either we do some kind of volunteer organizational structure. Oh, okay. It is good thing or at least we cooperate to each other. Sure. Right. We help to each other. So in Ikna, I was, uh, when I was in Al Falah, so Al Falah center was, uh, you know, just, just like your center was bought from a uh, old Islamic uh, school. Yeah, it was yeah. a school building. Yeah, yeah. So in my time, it was renovated. Okay. And it become more focused on masjid and we have a school, grade 8 to a primary, yeah, you know, yeah. up to grade 8 uh, school, sure. Islamic school. Sure. It was all day Islamic school. Yeah. And then we have uh, other activities there. And I always uh, opening masjid for kids, for youth. Oh, okay. So I providing for them, for them, I said, come here just to play. Okay. And I know when they will play, when they will play. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Know. Come to yeah. come to play and stay for and play. Then, uh, yeah. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, yani in my, when I was, uh, you know, responsible for IGNA, so Alhamdulillah, yani, uh, two masajid actually started in, uh, I, I was forced to bring it to IGNA. Okay. One is Meadowell and one is Milton. Okay. And Milton Masjid now yani, is a very huge masjid. It is a very big masjid. Yeah, yeah. And also when I was in Calgary, also I, I founded many masajid there. So, Alhamdulillah, when I was here, so okay. I brought my family also. Sure. So, my daughters, two daughters, they were teaching in Islam, uh, learning in Islamic school. Okay. And my wife was teaching to kids and women, especially women, especially girls. Okay. And this is uh, something happened. So, I, when I came here, so many activities I joined. So, one of the activities I joined, Council of Imam. Oh, okay. Right. So, I am now chair of Canadian Council of Imam. And before that, I was president. Oh, okay. And uh, also, we formed a, 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 a Islamic finance advisory. Oh, okay. To gi give advice in halal financing, halal, uh, you oh, know, okay. housing, and kind of these things, advisory capacity. Okay. So I am chair of this board. Oh, okay. And then uh, currently, we also founded another organization, Fiqh Majlis. Oh, okay. Fiqh Majlis means how we connect our sources of Quran and Hadith under Fiqh in our environment here. Wow. Okay. Because if you are bringing fatwa from other country, sure. though they don't know yeah. how you will apply here. Yeah. Just like I give the timing of salat, suppose, yeah, of for example. Course. The, the application timing obviously of has suhur. to be relevant. Yeah. Lot of yeah. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I was in position okay. to, for example, see what, what is the good way. Okay. And my idea is that how we bring Islam a easy solution for oh, okay. Muslims. Okay. They will not feel that it is very difficult, we cannot sure. do it, right? Sure. And we always I encourage positive side of their lifestyle and so on. So Alhamdulillah, this journey, so, my journey, I can say, is journey <laughs> of community service. Okay. In, now in let's area uh, let's move towards uh, the the, uh, the last part. Um, as you know that you know we, we had a pandemic uh, that came, you know, COVID in 2000. How did you cope with with that? Uh, what was your experiences? 
and how you know, did you find you know the government response yes uh, actually what happened uh, the covid was really was very very challenging time for us especially in our different kind of rulings about salat suppose we have to stand side by side yes right but then it uh, the ruling came that we have to uh, stand distancing, apart distancing yeah. Yeah. how we do social it. distancing yeah so we accepted this idea we said we will do it so our idea was we have to establish salat whatever you know uh, possibility is there okay right suppose for example they say 50% okay we reduce second so say no no only 10 people allow so yeah. we can do 10 people but we maintain that what is the most important thing the basic thing we cannot miss it just i give you an example suppose a people are sitting at home and they are just seeing imam delivering khutbah they are listening it is okay but they suppose they they are sitting at home and they pray juma behind imam on the television on the TV. so i said it, it will not be so they supposed to go with there yeah, yeah. so i myself when I, my center actually was little bit uh, yani you know uh, puzzled that we can use a facility or not so i was doing suppose for example just uh, in a remote a place five people juma oh, and okay. i said i will not miss it Okay. So alhamdulillah during the covid period i didn't miss any juma oh, okay. but it was whatever restriction and, 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 they followed and, and it. how did you find the government response no uh, government they in, were very positive yani you know, just i you can say you very you positive yani you know? okay. i give an example yani you know, many time it happened they they listen a kind of complaint about some masjid so the policeman or any officer will come and they will see the situation and they will explain to them do this thing or don't do this thing and so on oh, okay. mostly they avoid to just like for example issue any kind of ticket or any kind of you know banning masjid and sure, so on sure. it happened I, i think one masjid or something not more than that oh, okay and they were going as council of imam to ask oh, okay and But also muslim medical advisory board yes. they were also uh, sitting with us okay. how for example we go side by side oh, okay. so it was very helpful for government it was helpful for us and alhamdulillah after this time when we are back and you can see that we were thinking that maybe masjid will be empty again maybe not people will not come back yeah, yeah, right yeah. but alhamdulillah masjid are full yeah they all bounced previous back. ramadan was uh, yeah, back mashallah uh, mashallah good good and in uh, uh, one thing very strange happened i think maybe you will uh, you have this experience suppose people in the corona time they were restricted not to go to suppose for example dine outside yeah. right uh-huh. not to travel not so on. so sometimes they have some saving So the Muslim they say what do we do with this money so they donated charity ah oh, mashallah so ch- just like a ikna isla ikna relief come ikna relief charity we have a charity yeah, isla yeah, ikna yeah, relief yeah. they they got double you know, you know for example uh, you know wow yes yeah, so, uh, funding and the okay, some good. donations good so it was uh, yani right. indicating that muslim are for example caring about this issue oh, okay okay but only thing which actually uh, uh, affected us especially those who were seniors or many good scholars good people they actually yani passed away in these days yes. so it was a huge for example loss for us absolutely, absolutely. and also many muslim families they were you know suffering in these days true so true. it is really so okay. i can say you that uh, actually this corona uh, i i i said now that corona era will not finish because we have to something continue after corona is over yes many destruction we have to follow it true second thing is that uh, after this ukraine issue the another point have happened because in 911 time we suffered yes there are muslim here they were also taking the heat whatever happening because sometime media yes. saying that muslim terrorists and so on so everyone looking to us in this yes. way but this era alhamdulillah is over but ukraine issue is bringing other kind of problem food uh, you know prices co- costly things yeah, yeah, and so on and all supplies that. and that yeah, thing yeah. but uh, what we actually learning that uh, muslims one thing we can say that muslim decided to live here to stay here and Absolutely. to start their journey Absolutely. with good muslim good citizen and good, good contributor right. uh, of course we have a challenges Absolutely. and i one time when i was meeting with uh, uh, paul martin the prime minister yes so i i said to him we as a muslim community very younger community we join later yes so you have to make for us some special bonus because the old uh, communities they already got many thing but True. we uh, we are in process just like a masjid yeah. we have no space for it right yeah. so i said for example if you have some space for worship place yes. so allocate for masjid also we will oh. pay money for it oh, okay. but give us a space oh, okay. and second thing is that when we are make our problem your problem yes when government yeah. deal it 
we will help them and we both solve it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, thank Dr. Nadvi. It has been a pleasure talking to you and definitely, you know, we learn a great deal of things from you. Yeah. And inshallah, even in the future, you know, we will have more conversations no, no problem, so that inshallah. we can learn from it. Uh, you know, I wanted to thank you, you know, for coming to the show. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, listening to the, our uh, show for today. And we will come up with the next episode, inshallah, next time. Until then, this is your host, Farooq Khan. Assalamu alaikum.